All right, what's going on, guys? We got Berserk, Chapter 362. I actually can read the English this time, so I'll be able to fill in the details that I wasn't able to fill in yesterday. And uh, with that said, let's get right into it. So, first things first... Um, I know I got a lot of complaints. Uh, <laughs> it looks like my prediction might have been wrong yesterday. Um, I thought that female character might have been the female version of Griffith based on the fact that it had the mark of the brand on the shoulder and Guts was holding her in his hand and he looked very shocked. And I was thinking to myself, well, maybe he killed the female anima of his personality and uh, that's what Guts is seeing. But a lot of you in the comments probably rightfully pointed out that that is not Griffith, that that is in fact Skull Knight's wife or his previous wife when he was King Geyseric. And that might possibly be Flora from the forest. So anyway, let's start with the beginning and then we'll get to that point when we get to it. So Hanar again smacks Guts in the chest with the hammer and he's talking about how there's a blood memory in the armor of the past owner. And he's looking over at Skull Knight when he's saying all this so obviously, you know, it's gotta be Skull Knight's memory. It's most likely King Geyseric. Um, I don't know who else it could be. But, uh, yeah, we go into the same memory as last time. We see the same images, Void and the other apostles, possibly the old god hand. And then when we get to that female, um, Flora, or, you know, whoever it is, every time I look at this image, because I went back and stared at this image for quite a while, and I, I kept saying to myself, I mean, I don't know, it, it really does look like a female Griffith. You know, the, the the curly hair and the facial aesthetic and it, it just, you know, Griffith already kind of had feminine characteristics to begin with. You know, he's obviously a dude, but, you know, he sort of has this female look to him. So I was thinking to myself, I mean, this really does look like him. If you put breast on him and sort of puffed up his lips a little bit, I mean, that would look like Griffith, wouldn't it? <laughs> I don't know. And we really don't have confirmation by the end of this chapter, but my original guess was probably wrong. So anyway, we get past that little vision. Shirka aids Guts in getting out of that unconscious world. She pulls him out of the Berserker armor. And, um, you know, Guts is sweating, and he's like, that right now was for sure the end. And he looks up at Skull Knight, and Skull Knight says, What you bore witness to was the end of a foolish king, and the beginning of a dead man stalking the endless night. So, I mean, if that's not confirmation that Skull Knight is King Geyseric, I don't know what is. Because there's only been one king referenced in the past, and that was King Geyseric. And, um, you know, the parallel would make sense if we think about it, because if you go back to those original chapters during the Golden Age arc, when Charlotte is telling Guts about the past king, he does make a reference to the fact that, hey, it sounds a lot like Griffith. And there are some interesting parallels there. You know, both kind of started from the bottom, and then they built up their kingdom, and they had this immaculate vision that they wanted to enact onto the world, but, you know, along the way, they had to do some dirty things. And then once they got into power, they had to sort of shun some people and sort of keep people in the darkness to make sure that the majority would reap the benefits. Um, but you can kind of see how both of their hands are tainted in blood. And this female girl here, it might be Flora, might be someone else, may have been King Geyseric's wife, you know, Skull Knight's wife. And, uh, you know, she fell to the eclipse just like Casca fell to the eclipse uh, back in the Golden Age arc. So very interesting. But the more I think about it, Casca was not the lover of Griffith. Casca was more of a tool of Griffith. You know, Griffith never really saw anyone as like a friend or a lover. So is it the same for King Geyseric? Did he not really see Flora as a lover, more as just a tool? Uh, you know, a political tool? Or, you know, what, what's going on there? And the fact that he referred to himself as a foolish king means that he probably has a lot of remorse, a lot of bad memories, and a lot of regret. So it's probably a situation much like Griffith, 
where he used this woman, didn't really love her, but then after the fact sort of developed feelings for her. Whereas Griffith, it doesn't even seem like he's getting there at all. Like, he used Casca in the battlefield, and then, you know, just to use her and abuse her, and then he doesn't really seem to have any remorse whatsoever. So there's an interesting parallel there, but there are some key differences. So, very interesting chapter, guys. Great artwork, as always. Mira outdid himself once again. And uh, tell me what you guys thought of this chapter in the comments, and I'll catch you on the flip side.